Okay, today we're talking about paraffin heaters or kerosene heaters as known in the US, okay? Old school, had these years, very reliable. You must make sure that you maintain them and keep them clean and in good working order. Before we get into it, of course, we always talk about carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide kills and you do need one of these, a carbon monoxide detector, all right? Go online, look into them. These run for about 10 years. They're anything between 10 and 20 pound here in the UK. Make sure you have one of these for every room that you're using this sort of kit, all right? So we put that on there. So on with the show. This one, um, believe it or not, I've had for a few years now, is by a company called Aladdin. This model is the Aladdinette. Believe it or not, this cost me four pounds. Yes, in that condition. This one here, the Zibru um, RT15, I think it's called. That was brand new, cost me 50 pounds with all of the wicks and ancillaries, etc. fuel pump. Um, this one here, I got in 2017 for the princely sum of 20 pounds, right? So what we're gonna do after some of this chat, we're gonna have some close-ups and a brief look inside and how they all work, right? Um, incidentally, this is 20 liters of paraffin. I get it on eBay by a company called Rye Oil. Um, it's the cheapest that I can find in bulk and I have a few of these, all right? And uh, trust me, paraffin, kerosene, stalls indefinitely, all right? You heard it here first, it stalls pretty much forever, all right? So it gives it a heads up way above loads of other fuels like petrol and diesel, okay? So what we're gonna do now, as promised, is we're gonna get into some of these and show you how they work and what I do to keep them running in tip-top condition. Don't forget, this is off-grid power solutions, all right? So you've got no mains gas, you know, no electricity, you haven't got a wood burner, okay? These will absolutely do, and I can't rate these high enough. So let's have a look at some of these things inside. So here is the Aladdin. Now, I absolutely love this, right? Um, this was pretty. This is exactly the same model that I had um, growing up as a kid in our um, outbuilding, our bathroom. No central heating, no double glazing, and the bathroom was heated up with one of these. So thanks, Dad, for hooking that up back in the day. And like I said, I was extremely lucky to find this for four pounds. Absolutely made up. Before we go on quickly, this is just another way that I'm, I keep the fuel. All right, that's a Swedish military five-liter can just like the old jerry can, and you can just hold it and pour through there, all right? They're brilliant, very stackable, you can stack them like this, all right? Seriously good bits of kit, very durable. Make sure it's cold, you just open the door like that. So if you wanted to um, do a screenshot or print screen, etc., now's your chance. All good, nothing bad, right. Inside here is the chimney, the reservoir, the control function, and we've got the cap, and we've got a gauge on there. So all we need to do is we need to basically just lift this out, all right? So here we have it, all right? I don't want to be tilting this too far forward because you should always keep these upright. There's the gauge, as I said. It's got a little glass disc in there to protect it. So it basically is a float valve in there, and it tells you how much fuel is in there, all right? Obviously, you're gonna be undoing that, pouring your paraffin in there, like I said in another video, what I used to do is get an old um, water bottle, cut the bottom off, dry it out, put that in there and just pour the paraffin straight through the plastic bottle into there or use a funnel if you really wanted to. So to light these then, basically, you just turn it and lift it off. Nice and simple, all right? What you're looking at here is the wick which basically is just um, cylindrical in shape. You can get spares for these all over the internet right now. Okay, eBay is a good place to look. Or there's other website that deal with these specifically. All right, so what you're gonna do is you can use this. It's basically a control wheel. You can just turn that up or down to adjust it. So you get that pretty much where you need it to be. Um, like I said in the hurricane lamp video, you need to make sure that the height of this wick protruding is not too high. The higher it is, the faster it burns, it soots black smoke. You get that low, what you're looking at is a blue flame is what you're after, okay? So once the wick's been in there and it's soaked up and it's all good, then you can light it. That's all you have to do. So you've got your fuel in there, your wick has been in there soaking for a good amount of time, the longer the better, okay? So what you don't want to do is a dry wick, burn it, 
and it would just be chaos. The wick needs to be pre-soaked. Like I said in the hurricane lamp video, a minimum, and that is a bare minimum of half an hour, okay? So once you give it a good clean up in surface, you put your new wick in there, you put the fuel in there, and you just leave it for a minimum of half an hour. Best way, leave it overnight, that's what I do. So what we do is we make sure that we've got our wick at the right level. Like I say, you can adjust it with this knob here. Any old lighter will do, and you just light it. All that's going to do is that's going to go around, full circle, okay? Like I said, if you have that wick too high, it's all going to be yellow flame. You're ideally looking at a blue flame, all right? So once this is um, settled down, okay, that will just burn blue, all right? All that's doing now is just burning off excess. That's all it is, because this hasn't been lit for a long, long time. And once that's all going really, really nice, you can then just put the chimney back on, put it back inside the heater unit, put the door on, job good. Like I said, again, repeating on the other video, do this outside, okay? It will eliminate any fumes, all right? What you don't want is to go into a room, light it, because it will give off a hell of a lot of fumes. Once this is going inside the unit, we put it all away for a good five minutes at least, then you can just literally just be very careful and take it into the room which you're going to be using it. So moving along to our friend, Mr. Zibru. Like I said, this is the R15, it's the TC model. Fantastic, absolutely worth its weight in gold. If you're fortunate enough to find one of these, grab it, I am not kidding. These are probably one of the best paraffin heaters in the world. Like, you wouldn't believe how good these are. These were actually issued to British troops um, on operations out in Afghanistan, believe it or not. So all we do to operate this is we just open that, comes out on a hinge, all right? As you can probably tell in there, it's a very complex glass unit. Now, can you see this here? Well, you can tell on this little spring lever here, all we do is slide it around and lift that out. That's all we do. So there it is, all right? So looking at the bottom there, you can tell how it radiates heat and spreads it so effectively. It's seriously, seriously well made. Made by an Italian company who've really done a good job. That just floats inside, okay? Now you have to be careful, this glass is very, very fragile, okay? You do want to do everything you can when you're transporting these. You don't want this breaking, okay? It's gonna ruin your day like you wouldn't believe. Okay, so inside there, there's the fuel reservoir, all right? So you've got the wick, which is cylindrical again, inside there what you need to do is because that wick is um down inside in the paraffin right now which is where it needs to be you need to have it wet at all times there it is that's at its full capacity right there okay so obviously you get this adjusted once it's in place you're absolutely good to go now like i said all the time it's sat down in the bottom there it's absolutely soaked which is what it should be all right and as we saw again we just press that button. Away she goes. So moving to the top, we have this cover. We open that. Just to remind you, use the good stuff. Now in here is that big cassette really. You just literally grab that handle, pull it straight out, turn it on its side and you can fill it up and put it straight back in again. Nice, quick, clean and simple. Brilliant design, really loving it. And it just stays shut like this. Okay, on the last note before we leave this one, there is um, a battery on the back of it, okay? Now, it does say on there, do not light the wick with a naked flame. It's absolutely been fine with me, okay? I just don't like the idea of relying on batteries. You don't really need to. Like, I've been using this for years, and it's never gone wrong. It's not a problem, all right? So, you can, if you really wanted to, you just press the button there, and all it does, it heats up the coils and it literally just glows the wick and catches fire, all right? So, like I say, you don't really need to. I just use it with an naked flame. It's been absolutely fine. Okay, so now we're moving on to the Valor. Really old school um, English company. Fantastic, they last for years. I won't even like to guess how old this thing is, but she works and she works like an absolute charm, okay? I chose this particular model. I was really turned on by it because it's got two chimneys, twice the amount of heat. This seriously will heat up a room super fast like you would not believe. So all we need to do then, we need to get access to that. As you can tell, the two handles on there. Here we go. 
All right, so pretty much the same as the Aladdin, okay? When cold, you just literally turn and lift off. What could be simpler? Brilliant. And all we do is the wick is just around inside there, and you can control that by moving it up and down, adjusting the flame. So what you wanna do is you wanna make sure the same as we've done before, the wick has been soaking minimum half an hour, ideally overnight, okay? So all it's gonna do is the, the paraffin inside the tank is gonna drain into the wick to saturate it. And once it's done, you put it just above where you can see it there, you light it, it should be a, a massive great big yellow flame. And all you do is you just turn it down as low as you can and just wait for it to go blue, okay? Once it's done, perfect. You might as well do two at the same time, okay? You've got two control knobs there. Exactly the same as the other one. You undo that and you pour your paraffin into there. Now, old school, you look down in there and you can see a cork, all right? It's very basic, but very effective. And it just operates the float lever, all right? So there we go. I only use SO Blue. Now, in the old days, you used to have a great big lorry that turned up with that and you just go outside your house and I'll just decant it into whatever containers you wanted to. So like we said, let's undo this. There you go. Can you see the little cork in there? That's just a float device, so you can see the gauge. As you can tell, it's practically full up. Zero is empty and one is full. Nice and simple, we love old school stuff. And as you can probably tell, it's still got the instructions on there. Now that is um, really sweet because some of you guys who have never used anything like this all you have to do is follow the instructions it's really really that straightforward okay and once you've used these for a few times you get used to them you will realize that you've made an excellent purchase this also comes with a wick cleaner okay so all it does is it just comes off its holder once you take the little cap off the top there you can literally just turn it around and it cleans all of the um, the carbon off of your wick and it will also take it to the point where it's less fumy. So absolutely wicked. The Valor, as you can see, this is the number 20 heater. So, so cool. So there we have it. Um, I hope it wasn't too technical and difficult. Try to make it as simple as I can. Um, like I said, these are very simple to use once you start using them, okay? At first, it's all a bit new. Absolutely fine. I had to start somewhere, like most of us did. But let me tell you this, having heating systems like this as an absolute backup will absolutely save your backside when it starts getting below zero, okay? No electricity, no gas central heating, it gets cold, all right? My first go-to, um, obviously we've got a wood burner, we're very fortunate, but many of you guys didn't. And before I moved, I didn't as well. So these were absolutely always on the forefront. I would rather go with my gas bottles, use all of those at first and once they're gone, then go on to these, okay? That's how it is, that's what I prefer, that's my chosen plan, and everyone's got their own plans, this is me, right? Like I said, don't forget this, the carbon monoxide detector, very, very important, all right? So, do yourself a big fat favor, look wherever you can online, and shops, second-hand shops, antique shops, um, what do we call them? auctions as well, house clearances, loads of places like that, Gumtree, loads of them places, right? You will find these if you look hard enough. And let me tell you this, you need to act fast because once the general public gets wind of what's going on, there's gonna be a stampede for this and you won't be able to find these. So get them as soon as you can, okay? Set aside some funds, get them. The prices are already going up, they're insane, all right? And they're only gonna go higher especially as this winter gets colder, all right? Don't be left in the cold, get yourself some backup heating. These are off-grid, you can take them anywhere, and don't forget, the fuel will last indefinitely. That is an absolute plus. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. There's loads of videos coming like this. We're really trying to help with off-grid solutions. So, stay warm, don't stay cold. Thanks for watching. Stay funky.